Well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the Chat Realm interview show. Joining me today is a sound designer for Naughty Dog Studios, Rob Kreckel. Welcome, Rob. How are you doing today? Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining me. It's it's awesome to have you on. Um, it, you're you're a friend of the, the the chat realm, and you're you've been on a lot of other shows. So I'm I'm glad to have you on and kind of pick your brain a little bit. Oh yeah. So, Dude, I've been a part of the chat realm since more or less the beginning, uh, <laughs> at least in a, lur a lurking capacity. Right, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure we all lurk a little bit at the beginning just to kind of <laughs> see if this is something we really want to get into. And, uh, you know, it's not, so that's... <laughs> but i was going to ask what the origins of your chat handle are but you just use your name for your chat handle um I do, do. You, do you have any screen names that you use uh online that might be odd or or different oh yeah of course i mean my gaming handle is and has been since the early days of like tcip games uh <laughs> knickknack oh okay. n-i-k n-a-k and the origin of that is uh like i i loved james bond films when i was growing up i still do uh, and I love the man with the golden gun, and oh, I thought okay. Nick Nag was such a like interesting, weird character. I was like, oh, that's a perfect name. So, no, that's... that was my online handle for a really long time. But uh, <laughs> recently, because you know people kind of know who I am, I guess a little bit more than than not. I figure I might as well just use my real name these days. Yeah, that's you know recognizable, especially since you're uh, you're you're you know very public figure now. <laughs> No, that's that's actually yeah on the on the low end, but yeah, right. <laughs> so you do a lot of uh, tech work, and and you know obviously a lot of uh, work with technology with your sound design. But what do you like to do outside of tech? Well, you know, if you can get outside and you know enjoy this thing we we I hear is called nature. I I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I really like playing ice hockey when I can. Uh, when I lived in San Diego, I, I used to play like three times a week. Um. But I learned, like, in my adult life, I, I always wanted to play when I was a little kid, but my parents, like, couldn't afford it or couldn't get me to the rink, like, crazy oh, early sure. morning. So um, when I moved to San Diego, of all places, I uh, decided to learn how to play ice hockey, but <laughs> it does I seem like an odd for, place like, to... three years straight, so. Right. It does seem like an odd place to pick up the hobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd think, but in San Diego, it's like there's um there's like four ice rinks within like five or ten miles uh, square miles huh. of like where I was living, which is more than like anywhere else I've ever lived. So it was kind of weird. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, when I when I was growing up in Colorado, I uh, you know in high school and stuff, I played a little bit of hockey, but it was just like you know random game out on the ice. So, you know, I never I never played for any actual team or anything. You know, sure, but it's it's yeah, fun. Yeah. Uh, and I got my ass kicked a lot, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, luckily I was just playing in beer leagues, so there's no checking. It's no. mostly just a bunch of old dudes <laughs> skating around. It's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. No, this this was high schoolers just, you know, pretending like they knew how to play hockey. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was it was fun, you <laughs> know, nothing else. But uh, so you're an avid Twitter follower. Uh, I, I notice you use your Twitter account quite a bit. Um, oh yeah. What's the best Twitter account that you follow? Maybe the one that you get the most uh, en enjoyment out of. Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to have to go look at my list real quick because <laughs> most people I, I usually can't, do. Off the top of my head, I'm like, I don't even know. It's I follow almost a thousand lists or people, so it's. I really like the actually the the one that's up right now. I really like Banksy's. Uh, list because there's always something interesting an interesting piece of art an in interesting uh visual or an interesting sort of maybe poem or just something that makes you think oh sure. um, at the real banksky uh that one's pretty good uh but in terms of people uh that's that's tough i don't know I like following uh, Will Wheaton's always good for a hoot. He's usually oh, got yeah. some interesting things uh, he's you, you uh, got to follow his about. wife too, though, because because there's usually a conversation going on between them. Otherwise, oh yeah, no, otherwise you don't get the amazing, whole joke. and her vandalized thing is <laughs> like worth following her just for that. So. Uh, I know, and and I need to I need to start carrying some around because I always see opportunities for it now that I now that I've followed her, and I'm like, oh hey wait, I could oh damn I didn't I don't have any with me, you know? That's that's too funny. No, oh, that's that's awesome. Those yeah. are some some good uh, Twitter accounts. Obviously, I follow some of those as well, so I'm I'm a little biased there. 
But <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll get into some real meaty questions. Uh, if you were given a superpower, or if you happen to gain one uh, one day, what what might that be, and what's what's the first thing that you would do with it? Superpower. Hmm. It's. I, I would love to be able to stop time. Oh, okay. uh, I know that sounds weird, but like time stopping is such a, like a cool ability and being able to like move and manipulate and change and do things while time is stopped. Um, it also be cool for things like my kid, like I have a, a one year old right now oh, sure. and it would be nice to freeze him for a second and like <laughs> take an hour where I can just relax. Can I like, take a nap? That's probably the first thing I would Please. do. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I could like chill out and then okay go back and and then right. we're, we're chasing around again. <laughs> um, but I I always thought that was sort of an interesting power that um, you don't really see much. It's not one of those sort of typical like I don't know super strength or flight or any of those like typical answers. But yeah, I think I, I think know. heroes probably did it um, the most most recently did did a decent job of it. For, True for the yeah, first yeah, yeah. season. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that that would be that would be very interesting. There's a lot of things that that I could I'd be like I I always complain that I need an extra day in the week because I I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have too much crap to do, you know. My my list of stuff to to you know people recommend stuff that I watch all the time and a list of projects that I have ideas for is is ever growing and the the two like just it it amounts to to me not having any time for for the foreseeable future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I have like a massive backlog of games, a massive backlog of books, uh, just just a backlog of everything, and then a million projects that, like you said, like yeah. just side projects that I'd love to work on that just sort of collect dust because yeah. there's not enough time. Yeah, or, or you get you get about an hour to start it one day, and then you never get back to it because <laughs> you don't have the time. It's yeah, pretty but much. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be really helpful to be able to freeze time back. All right. I'm gonna bang out this project. It might take me a week, but nobody'll know. So <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty awesome. Um, so in in similar veins of of what you would like to 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 do if you could, um, but if you could move to any planet, real or fictional, um, what would it be, and uh, what would your house look like? What might you live in? I would love to move to Coruscant, like uh, the the city planet in oh, yeah. uh, Star Wars. Uh, just because I think it would be an amazing, like, like I like city life. Like I like city living. I grew sure. up, I'm um, just out of New York city and, um, I just love the city and that's like a sprawling, never ending city. So I just think it'd be really cool. Cause you, there'd be just so much to do, so much to see kind of never ending. And my house would probably be something small and modest, uh, like an apartment, right. um, probably in a high rise or maybe a subterranean level, depending on how well I'm doing. Uh, be yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably be pretty Spartan. A, a little Futurama okay. style. You have to live with the mutants. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like an expensive planet to live on, but no, I, I agree. I, I I enjoy more city life. Uh, there's there's nothing around where I live. I, I live. It's a small town, but it's not like tiny, tiny. And it's just, it never feels like there's a good restaurant. I was like, I've been to everything here and they're all, meh. <laughs> you know, nothing will deliver past midnight. You know, I, I, when, yeah. when was the last time I could get Greek food at 3 a.m.? You know, delivered to, to my to my house. I, yeah, that would be awesome. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I, I grew up outside of New York and, and I lived in Chicago for a bit. And now I'm in L.A. It's like, these are all cities that are basically can fulfill all of those things that you just asked for right. at any time of day right exactly <laughs> oh that's that that would that would be really well plus you're you're then in the star wars universe which means that you know you might have the the opportunity to pick up a lightsaber or something and um i, I recommend lightsaber blast garments. and drive a speeder right yeah least. definitely um, although, you know, I bet it's like New York. You're like, ah, nobody ever drives. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the bus. <laughs> Everyone just hangs on to droids and like, <laughs> yeah. around, like in schools. No. <laughs> Everybody's got really strong forearms and in, in course. That's how they have to get around. Um, well, so let's get into a little bit about what, what you do. You're a sound designer for, for Naughty Dog Studios. Um, what was one of the most entertaining games that you did uh, sound design for? Um, just that the sound kind of came uh, out and, and most fun all around. I, I think 
probably un until, I mean, Uncharted 4 is going to be amazing. And we're working on that right now. Uh, and that's been a blast, but it's not out yet. Uh, in terms of games that are out, probably Uncharted 3 in terms of fun. Um, just because it had these insane moments, this uh, this airplane that gets ripped open in the sky and then crashes and Drake gets sucked <laughs> out and is flying and catches a box and pulls a parachute. Like, doing all the sound for that was a blast. It was just really, really fun and really satisfying when it all kind of came together. Um, you know, The Last of Us was amazing, but I was much more on the technical side of that one and oh, also did a lot of the sort of like the quiet moments, the ambience, the these subtle emitters of like debris falling and birds tweeting and crickets in corners and that stuff. So that stuff's fun, but not quite as fun as a, a plane getting ripped in half. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, some the, I, again, I, I, I've been told to play the games, haven't gotten into any of the Uncharted series yet. <laughs> no, no offense, but <laughs> no, it looks super it's fun. Good. It's just, uh, you know, I, I play Diablo and uh, now City Skylines, and that's about it. That's about all I got time for. Har Hearthstone when I'm sitting on the couch on my on my uh, Nexus now that it's finally out for oh, Android and everything. I was gonna say now that's on the phone, you you can't get away from it. It's, yeah, now now you I always play. have it. Yeah, <laughs> now all other games on my phone I do not play. It's it's Hearthstone whenever I get the chance. Um, although it's it's tough to carve out like. You know, you, to play a game of Hearthstone, you got to sit down for 10 minutes, you know, or 15 minutes or something, or be able to look at your phone for that long. You can't just, uh, you know, pull out your phone for a couple minutes and run a quick, you know, game of whatever, you know, tic-tac-toe or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but, yeah, that's, it sounds but I feel like, like go ahead. they did a really good job with the uh, UI and, like, sort of making it work really well on the phones. So, though you may not have that time, you are compelled to. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm in the bathroom. I guess I'm going to play around a Hearthstone, even though I should probably just do my business and leave. <laughs> well, I found myself actually more on the phone spectating. Um, if I'm out somewhere and I, I go, I'm, I'm like, yeah, let's, you know, I got five minutes to knock out. I'll go and see who's on and just see how they're playing. And um, so, th so in, in that way, it, it works really, really well. So, um, so you just go spectate Justin because he's constantly <laughs> playing at all times yeah i was actually i've been watching neshcom a lot recently he's been he's been playing oh yeah he's he's not too bad he'll say otherwise but he's not too bad at all so um so we'll go back to the the sound design stuff what's your favorite out of context line from a a, a recording that you did or or you know maybe maybe sound that that just is, is really interesting what the what the sound actually is versus what it was used for um in terms of lines, like there's some amazing Nolan North outtakes, but none of which that I can repeat, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but we did have this guy, and uh, and you're gonna have to forget, I forget his name, but we brought him in um, to give us ideas for the bloaters in The Last of Us, which was one of the bigger infected enemies. Mm. And um, one of the outtakes was him doing an amazing Arnold Schwarzenegger impression <laughs> that was just like ridiculously like on. It was totally on. It was just like perfect, <laughs> and uh, That's too funny. He's like reciting lines from Predator and stuff, and that was just hilarious. Oh man! Um, in terms of like funny sounds uh, that I've recorded, I mean, uh, almost every recording session I've ever been to, a fart gets recorded. Yeah, <laughs> on purpose Cause or pe yeah, because people <laughs> have you know bodily functions and there are microphones and recorders happening and. Sound guys find farts really funny. I mean, most people probably do, but we find them extra funny for some reason. Uh, and we always find ways to use them in interesting ways. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, pretty much every recording session, there's been at least one. You, you, you'd you get along with Scott Johnson a lot. That's <laughs> You watch the morning stream? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> uh, that's too funny. And that's that's hilarious. That, uh, that... I mean, I guess it, now, that it, now that you say it, it makes perfect sense. Because it's like, oh, you know, we just went to Taco Bell for lunch, and hey, I might need this for later. <laughs> you know, how, yep. uh, you know, you just got to take the recording when you get the chance. Oh, I got my mic. Okay, just <laughs> here for a sec. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Well, you know, for another question, we actually have a couple from the chat room here. Um, not the sound effect one, but <laughs> this one's actually a good, a good funny question. Um, what is the most boring sound effect you have to you've had to make, or maybe that you have to make on on a regular basis? Oh, that's easy. Uh, it's footsteps. Uh -huh. um, in both the Uncharted games and Last of Us, like 
we have footsteps for every single thing that you can walk on. So piles of trash, concrete, dirty concrete, wet concrete, oh. uh, mud, you know, like, and so on and so on and so on. And um, most of that is just, it's been recorded and we need to just edit it. And that is very, very boring. <laughs> it <just> takes forever. Because <laughs> uh, we, we like cut the heels and the toes separately so we can like recombine them randomly and like space them out to make them like quicker when you're running or a little bit slower when you're oh, walking sure. and that stuff is just tedious do you do you hear people like running in real life now and you're like oh yeah he's running on wet concrete that was poured four days ago <laughs> you know, like, it's... <laughs> not quite but i tell you being a sound guy you definitely hear things that a lot of people tend to ignore on their their day-to-day -day. i mean the brain's really good at like filtering junk out except as a sound guy, you're like always listening for like cool stuff right. that you might want to record. And so you tend to hear a lot more things than, than people um, think they hear. Hmm. It's all the stuff that gets sort of filtered out through your day to day. That's, that's really interesting because you're right. We, I mean, we all obviously hear it. It's just like your memory. You, you remember everything ever ha that ever happens for about 10 minutes <laughs> and then it's gone <laughs> you know? and yep. then you then your brain decides what to, what to keep and what not to keep but um but yeah that happens with sound too you know you, you don't uh, if, if we did like actively listen to every sound we could possibly hear we'd all probably go crazy it's too much mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah um but, but and, uh, and anything that's like a consistent sound like a drone or just a a very consistent sort of thing that continues that that like will start loud and your brain will just go okay you're not important anymore i'm going to turn you down i'm going to turn you down turn you down to the point where you're like if somebody was talking to you you'd be able to hear what they're saying even though it's in the midst of this other sound that's going on that is probably potentially more more uh high frequency or louder or distracting that's that's pretty that's brilliant i mean yeah i bet i bet they're going to try to mimic that when they when they do um um better voice recognition and stuff um because like i have a moto x and so in the car mm -hmm. um so you, you do the voice training on it for uh so it actually knows your voice and so you can wake it from sleep and everything which is pretty slick um tom never sets mine off on daily tech news show when he's when he's saying stuff like okay google and everything yeah it never never sets mine off because it's like it's trained to my voice so but That's in the yeah. in the car, I have to kind of yell at it because it's uh, it's hearing the road noise and it can't really qu quite understand what I'm saying. Um, oh, <laughs> Carl's like, "Damn it, Tidbeck!" <laughs> Must have set his off. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, that that'd be really interesting if we could do the noise cancellation that like our brain does. It, then it would be able to hear it, you know, much more easily it, it, in in those types of situations. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some awesome technology that can do that stuff. It's The key is being able to do it in real time. Um, and Tim Vick, uh, uh, that's you. Carl actually <laughs> asked a question about cleaning up the, the Night Attack album. Um, and a lot of that was that mm. sort of noise reduction uh, that has to happen. And um, there's some great, great plugins that, that are able to do that. But the hardest part about cleaning up uh, Night Attack Live um, was actually making sure that all the levels were consistent because uh, Brian and Justin have very different like inflections and yeah. volume levels. And so I had to go in by hand because it was all married together in the same track. It's not like Brian was on one track and Justin was on another track. Of they were just not. all on one track. You don't get that lucky. And so, <laughs> yeah, no. So I had to go in by hand and kind of draw automation to fix the volume. And then Justin is also really plosive -y. so he, his P's oh, are very pops. poppy. Yeah. And uh, he was talking into a handheld mic, which they're not great at reducing plosives. And so I had to cut each one of those down and EQ out like a lot of the low end, just at the the head of that like plosive element. Oh, that yeah. just took a long time. Well, even with this mic, I had to get a, one of those foam covers and I have to sit back a little bit from it just to make sure I don't hit it too hard, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's really easy to, to, to do that. Even on, on, on uh, cheap mics, on more expensive mics, it's like if you don't have a pop screen, you're going gonna, gonna to hear it on like every hard consonant. Oh, I bet. That's, that's, that's so interesting. Um, okay, so I have one more question from Carl uh, in, in a similar vein. Uh, what's the most expensive to produce sound effect? You know, like, is it weapons fire because you have to rent the rent the gun or something? Or 
Uh, weapons actually aren't too bad. Uh, it's explosions, actually. They're the most expensive thing because they are extremely volatile, and so you need a place where you can set these things off. Traditionally, you need some kind of like professional uh, pyro person or <laughs> some kind of law enforcement professional to be on site to monitor the activity, because um, a lot of the a lot of the things that uh, that you use to blow things up are controlled substances, and like sure. you or I wouldn't be able to go buy them, um, <laughs> and so they're phenomenally expensive, and you can't buy them. So that that's that makes it even more expensive. It's probably but yeah, definitely. Explodes. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> if they let me buy crazy stuff like you know i could just go to yeah. home depot and buy some c4 you know it's, it's probably not a good idea um, that would be bad news. yeah it'd be fun I mean, there, for like there are things that you can blow up like tannerite that that anyone can get it's a, a velocity based explosive mm -hmm. so you still have to shoot it so you need a gun or something to set it off um or you can do like dry ice bombs oh, but yeah. those are not quite the same thing as like a real like C4 explosion explosion right. or dynamite or a grenade <laughs> a or grenade, a yeah. RPG or, you know, like that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Well, uh, thanks for joining me. We got your Twitter uh, to plug at Rob Kreckel. That's K-R-E-K-E-L. Yeah, it's up there on the screen if you're uh, watching mm -hmm. the video version. And uh, you got a, a URL to plug too, bit.ly slash triunesfx. It's T-R-I-U-N-E-S-F-X. Uh, tell, tell us what, what that's about. So uh, that, that bit.ly will take you to the Triune uh, digital store where um, I work with the Film Riot guys that some of you might be familiar with, uh, the Connollys. Um, and we sell sound effects libraries for short films. Uh, currently, we have a uh, Melee library so it's punches kicks whooshes uh and gore and things like that Did you actually get to and then we also people? have guns uh <laughs> we recorded a, a a ton of guns we have two different process types we have like a hollywood style larger than life crazy big style uh processing and then we have more the more realistic sort of and i say realistic with air quotes sure. um <laughs> it's the more natural sounding versions and uh yeah they're 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 meant for they're not really meant for sound designers they're meant for filmmakers indie filmmakers or indie game makers even oh, anyone sure. who needs like ready to drop drop in assets that they just are going to sound awesome and they can just plop them in hey i one of those ideas that's on my shelf is a, is a game idea so i might have to come call in one day <laughs> when i finally get there the time go. to do it uh at, at yeah, which point it'll have already been done but you know, <laughs> uh no you just need that time stop power man and then you're all set I, exactly no, that's excellent. Thanks, thanks so much for for joining me. Um, you, you, anything else you like to plug, or is that is that about all you got for us? Oh no, that's it. Yeah, go follow me on Twitter if you don't already, and uh, I'm sure there'll be there'll, there'll be more there'll be more things uh, as as time goes on. There you go. Oh, actually, you know what? I will plug one more thing. I'll plug the um, the latest short film from Ryan Connolly and mm. uh, the Triune guys. It's called UFO Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> If you search on YouTube, UFO, yeah, you'll find it. I, I like um, it by I don't name have already. a direct link for it. <laughs> Maybe we can put it in the uh, show notes or something. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. Or you can paste it in the chat room, and I'm sure. Yeah, I'll paste it in the chat. There we go. Excellent. So what, what's there it, what's it about? So UFO Yeah is about a uh, UF enthusiast, a UFO enthusiast who's um, renting a cabin in the woods and uh, his dreams get fulfilled in an interesting <laughs> way. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, I'll have, I'll have to go watch it after we're done here. <laughs> it's fun. It's short. It's like five minutes long. It's a, it's a funny little uh, short film. Well, that's awesome. Well, thanks again for joining me. And uh, thanks for joining me, everybody, in the chat room. Uh, you can watch more of these questionings at tenvac.com slash DD. Uh, there's RSS and iTunes subscriptions there as well if you'd like to listen to uh, it after the fact. You can always catch it live on uh, Saturdays, usually Saturday afternoon, but we had to do a little bit of time uh, adjusting for, <laughs> for Rob tonight, so use that superpower there. Uh, we will yeah. see you next time, though. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>